Thank you so much, Ruth. Um, a lot of rich information there for us to reflect on. So thank you very much for taking us through that journey of yours. As we continue the discussion on the changing operation, or operating environments of, landscape, uh, of land care, I'm going to invite uh, Matthew Ebden to come to the lectern in just a moment. But I also want to pause to ask you to think about, during these presentations, what's inspiring you with what you're hearing? So we're going to come back to that. I'm going to ask you to, to think about that, and we'll come back to that when we get to question time. So Matthew is a lecturer in the School of Health and Development at Deakin University. He enjoys outdoor pursuits and contact with nature through hiking, kayaking, and other activities. This gives him a strong base from which to investigate the influence of nature and environmental volunteering on human health. Really interesting dimensions here. Matthew is a member of the Health, Nature and Sustainability Research Group and has explored methods for improving environmental volunteering across New South Wales in terms of recruitment, retention, effectiveness, efficiencies and the experiences of volunteers. In his role as lecturer at the School of Health and Social Development at Deakin University, Matthew's responsibilities include teaching in the areas of public health, health promotion, occupational therapy, coordinating the health sciences program and managing partnerships with external players. So quite a big portfolio, very interesting sounding. This morning he is presenting on how we can better connect people with nature, both for ecosystem and human health outcomes. Please welcome Matthew. Good morning. I'd like to thank the Land Care Association of South Australia and the Riverland West Land Care for the opportunity to present today. I'm here on behalf of my colleague and friend, Marty Townsend, who is unfortunately um, unable to be with us as she underwent recent surgery. But Marty and I have worked very closely on the research that I'll be presenting today. I'm going to tell you a story today about the three little pigs. Some of you may be familiar with um, the original version, but this is the Landcare Association of South Australia version. I hope some aspects of this story will become a part of your story of land care, connecting people and healthy landscapes. Throughout this story, it may be useful for you to consider what factors may contribute to Landcare's goal of connecting people and healthy ecosystems. And there are skill testing questions for you at the end, so pay attention. So once upon a time there were three little pigs. One day they set out from the farm where they had been born. They were going out into the world to start new lives and their own farms. The first little pig met a man carrying some straw and asked him if he might have some to establish the farm. The straw would provide for both the fodder and modest accommodation. And so the first little pig's farm was established built on the traditional farming practices passed down to him through generations of farming. The first little pig built his farm at a cracking pace. He had his mind set on vacationing and before long he was cruising around the Bahamas. On his return he was shocked to find the big bad wolf perched on the edge, edge of his farm. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. To which the first little pig replied, no, no, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, I'll not let you in. So the wolf shouted very crossly, then I'll huff and I'll puff till I blow your farm in. And he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed and like sands draining through the hourglass, the first little pig's farm began to dwindle away. The fields dried up, leaving the farm without fodder. The first little pig could not afford to pay his bills, so his farming business began to fold. The land had been stripped of nutrients and protection from the external forces, such as drought. Erosion, salinity and dry conditions not only impacted on agricultural productivity, but also threatened the survival of the surrounding native species. The first little pig was left destitute. He succumbed to boredom, depression and developed addictions to drugs and alcohol. Not a good sign. The big bad wolf was relentless and kept huffing and puffing until only bare parched earth remained, forcing the first little pig to leave with what remained of, of the farm with the mere rags he had on his back. 
So then the second little pig came along. He was walking along the road when he met a man with a load of wood. Please, sir, he said, can you let me have some of that wood so that I can build a farm? Of course, said the man, and he gave him a big pile of wood. In no time at all, the second little pig had built himself a lovely farm. He invited his brother, the first little pig, to join him. The second little pig took note of the plight of his brother and realised that he needed to increase his knowledge about innovative farming practices. And so the second little pig invested heavily in the latest farming technologies. Pesticides kept the bugs at bay. He had no reason to pull out weeds with the trusty herbicides on offer. The second little pig had all the latest gadgets, bells and whistles available to him. Before long, his farm had become a productive little cash cow. The second little pig was also very excited and keen to head out on vacation. After all, he needed the break. The technology was getting to him. He invited his brother, the first little pig, to join him in Las Vegas to live the high roller life. On their return, the first and second little pigs were met by the big bad wolf poised like a vulture ready to strike his prey, gazing upon the second little pig's farm. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. To which the second little pig replied, no, 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 not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, I'll not let you in. So the wolf shouted, I'll huff and I'll puff till I blow your farm in. And he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, and the second little pig's farm began to crumble under the test of time. The use of pesticides and herbicides had introduced new problems on the land, and with an over-reliance on technology, the second little pig had developed nature deficit disorder. <laughs> with associated stress, anxiety, depression, obesity, social isolation, and even a gambling addiction. The second little pig even resorted to crime to try and pay for a lifestyle he could not afford. He was not in a good way. The big bad wolf was relentless and kept huffing and puffing until only a few trees and some building foundations remained. The first and second little pigs abandoned the farm, homeless, aimless and destitute. The third little pig met a man with a cartload of bricks. Please sir, can I have some bricks to build myself a farm? He asked and when the man had given him some, he built himself a lovely farm with the bricks. The third little pig knew that the brick house and farm shed would need to be meticulously constructed to withstand the force and tenacity of the big bad wolf. He witnessed the triumphs, struggles and ultimate collapse of both his brother's straw and wooden farms. He needed to ensure his farm would be healthy and resilient. Each brick had a distinct purpose and was placed carefully and securely. The third, brick, the, sorry, the third pig understood the importance of appreciating the process of building his farm and was in no hurry to head off on vacation as both his brothers had done to their peril. The third little pig welcomed his displaced brothers to his farm. He valued the lessons his brother had, brothers had learned regarding the successes and failures they had encountered building their farms. His brothers had both managed their farms independent of the wider community. And the third little pig knew that this could result in environmental degradation and improper management of natural resources. Being a curious creature, and understanding the importance of research, the third little pig was keen to discover how he could create a resilient and productive farm. He read books and journals such as It's a Pig's World, From Sty to Riches, Pigs Digest Daily, Nature Nurtures Pigs, and Please Hold Off on the Bacon. These resources made it clear to him that the key to success lay within his community. He learnt that cooperative agricultural microcatchments are two to three times more productive than areas that do not cooperate. What I'm trying to say here is that um, it's important to co cooperate and that develops productivity. These productive gains are associated with improvements in natural resource management such as cleaner groundwater, land revegetation and decreased use, to, use of pesticides. And so the first land care community was launched one of over 5,000 land care, water watch and coast care groups that followed across the third little pig's great land. Land care provided the third little pig and the other farmers in his community with a strong network based on friendships, sharing farming ideas, labour and support and cooperating in decision making and the allocation of resources. The third little pig did not stop there though. He wanted to ensure that his farming community was the best it could be. After all, he noticed that both of his brothers and some other members of the community experienced health conditions. 
For his community to be viable and strong, he knew that it was important that everyone in the community had the opportunity to be healthy and involved in the community. He travelled to Geelong and the surf coast regions of Victoria to observe the impacts of Feel Blue Touch Green that found many benefits for people, uh, people who experienced mental illness and social isolation when they were included as volunteers in a conservation group. He witnessed these new volunteers working beside existing volunteers and park rangers, planting trees, weeding, monitoring wildlife and learning about the interrelationships between species. Most of these volunteers had not participated regularly in community pursuits such as employment. And so for the first time, they felt as though they were contributing positively to their community and developed a sense of self-worth as a result. They developed new capacities and felt confident. The volunteers reported experiencing benefits emotionally while connecting with others and nature. Their physical health improved and they learned to manage their mental health through environmental volunteering. The third little pig was very heartened to hear the volunteers speak about the social, spiritual, physical and mental health benefits of environmental volunteering. One of the volunteers even exclaimed, I need natural environments to maintain my mental health. I've had it with support groups and counsellors. Not to discount the value of support groups and counsellors, the third little pig began to realise the therapeutic benefits of environmental volunteering and how this could be applied to Landcare and his community. The third little pig furthered his research interests by travelling to Britain, where he, ba he was based with the Forestry Commission of the UK. He and his colleagues spoke to 113 environmental volunteers and represent representatives from environmental organisations about the motivations, barriers and benefits of environmental volunteering. The research confirmed the benefits associated with Feel Blue Touch Green, um, but also highlighted a number of innovative programs linking environmental volunteering to health, well-being, community capacity building and environmental sustainability. For example, a program offering young offenders an opportunity to volunteer for the full time for 12 months in environmental management as an alternative to imprisonment supported the young, people, young men to develop social, environmental management and personal development skills essential for them to take meaningful and active roles in their community such as through employment. This opportunity provided them with purpose, meaning and connections to their community and environment that deterred them from engaging in their former destructive role of harming their community through crime. When the third little pig came back to his farm, he explored methods to support his brothers and some other members of the community to become involved in land care. They had not been meaningfully involved in the community due to mental illness, disability, long-term unemployment, cultural status, retirement or offending behaviour. Understanding the importance of volunteering, connecting with others in nature, the third little pig commenced research in his community. In this case, it was Warrnambool and the, surf and, and the great south coast region of Victoria. To find out how people could be included as land care volunteers if they chose to do so. He brought together representatives from a range of sectors and conducted focus group interviews to identify the possible benefits, barriers and enables of social inclusion in land care volunteering. Representatives from health and community services, environmental agencies, local government, education and other sectors were keen to participate in the research and community development process. The community members were very supportive of the social inc inclusion process with potential benefits for individual health, community cohesion and environmental sustainability. The third little pig reviewed the relationship of his land care group to government agencies, NRM bodies, individuals and organisations. Understanding that social inclusion, volunteering, contact with nature and healthy ecosystems are fundamental determinants of health, the third little pig worked with his community to promote and deliver programs fostering social inclusion in land care volunteering. And so the third little pig carefully incorporated each brick to build his farm. He also worked hard to ensure land care and his community would be more inclusive, resilient, environmentally sustainable and productive. A new model for land care was launched. This model involved almost the whole community in land care, which served to strengthen the social fabric of the community with profound benefits for agricultural productivity and the management of natural resources and biodiversity. 
Land care provided opportunities for everyone, including new migrants and refugees, offenders, people challenged by disability and mental illness, people who had been socially isolated, people who experienced long-term unemployment and others. These people gained many benefits while contributing to their community and the environment. The community grew stronger and land care was central to this process. The big bad wolf came along and licked his lips as he thought about the third little pig's farm. He shouted, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the little pig called back, no, no, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, I'll not let you in. So the wolf shouted, then I'll huff and I'll puff till I blow your farm to smithereens. And the wolf huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed again, but still the farm which had been so well built by the three little pigs with support, sorry, the third little pig with support from his brothers and community could not be destroyed, no matter how hard the wolf tried. Exhausted and defeated, the big bad wolf gave up on the third little pig's farm, leaving the three little pigs to celebrate their achievements in ecstatic elation. They danced and jammed their musical talents in unison, singing about the qualities essential to building their resilient and healthy farm. So now for the skill testing questions. So what did the big bad wolf represent? Anyone have any ideas? <laughs> Hearing a few people yelling out things, but we don't have a microphone, so I might just, um, might just summarise what, uh, what I think the big bad, bad wolf represented there. The big bad wolf represented environmental degradation of the first little pig's farm due to an over-reliance on traditional farming practice techniques and failure to invest in human capital to develop healthy natural resource management and farming practices. The first little pig did not develop the skills and knowledge necessary to adapt, the challenging, to adapt to the challenging and changing circumstances. These challenges overwhelmed the first little pig and he developed a range of disorders including depression and drug addiction. The big bad wolf also represented environmental uh, degradation on the second little pig's farm due to an over-reliance on technologies that weaken the farm and local biodiversity, making it less productive and more susceptible to environmental changes. Although the second little pig invested heavily in human capital, he did not consider the importance of social capital for sharing knowledge and the resources in the development of a productive and resilient farm. The second little pig experienced environmental deprivation, including nature deficit disorder, due to the overuse of technologies and disconnection from the natural environment, resulting in conditions such as depression, social isolation, anxiety, obesity, and gambling addiction. And so what did the, thir the, the three little pigs represent? Well, together the three little pigs with the third little pig at the helm successfully invested in both human and social capital to improve natural capital in the forms of agriculture, resource management and biodiversity. They contributed to a strong, well-connected, socially inclusive community that was responsive and adaptive to the environmental challenges and changes. All three pigs and their community became stronger, healthier and happier as a result of living in a cohesive community, with land care central to providing a range of educational, social, economic, cultural, health and ecological benefits. So I'd just like to uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to share the story of the three little pigs. I just want to leave you with the words of um, the remix Big Bad Wolf song, uh, the South Australian land care version. So thank you very much. Are you going to sing it? <laughs> you might, you might. I just asked Matthew if he'd sing it to us. Oh, I don't know if I want to upstage the, uh, the gentleman who, was, uh, who, who performed last night. He was fantastic. <laughs> but if anyone else wants to come up and sing, feel free to do so. so thank you very much.